Hi, and welcome to Real Estate with Lou the Shoot. In today's video, we're going to be giving you steps five and six of the home buying process. In previous videos I recorded, we talked about steps one and two, which is if a property was right for you and how to get pre-approved. Steps three and four, we talked about working with an agent and putting an offer in. Now steps five and six, we're going to be talking about scheduling that home inspection and what an appraisal is and how it works. So, but before we get into today's video, I did want to talk to you guys real quick about this webinar I'm going to be hosting on. May 1st. This is going to be a first time home buyer webinar. We have an attorney, a lender, and an inspector all helping me out. And it's going to be a great time. All these videos that I'm doing in the purchase of a home buying process is going to be leading up to that webinar. Everybody that attends that webinar is going to get a thousand dollars free of closing cost credit for their first purchase. So it's definitely something that you're going to want to attend. Even if you don't plan on buying a home for the next three to five years, whatever, it's going to be something that you're really, really going to want to watch and you're going to want to attend and be there. So strongly encourage you guys to all make it. I'm going to leave the registration link in the description of the video. So if you have any questions on that as well, please reach out to me. Thanks. Now let's get back to today's video. In step five, we have the home inspection process. So a home inspection is not mandatory, but I'm going to strongly, strongly encourage everyone to get a home inspection done. Even if it's a new construction or new build, I know and I understand that today's market, you have to make your offer look as appealing as as possible so that way you can actually get your offer accepted so this isn't going to be for everybody but for most people and for majority of people you're not going to want to waive that home inspection because in all reality you want to know what you're buying your typical home inspection is going to be anywhere between three to five hundred dollars depending on the home depending on the size and a bunch of other stuff they do have add-ons as well so you can do like a termite inspection sometimes there's additional cost for that a lot of times there's an additional cost if you want the water tested for say a septic system so the prices can kind of vary but on average i'd say it's about three to five hundred dollars definitely just want to give them a call and that way you can schedule that home inspection now one thing that you do want to ask your home inspector prior to showing up to the house for the inspection is you're going to want to ask how long it's going to take a lot of home inspectors like to take their time and, and sometimes it could take anywhere from three to five hours so you want to make sure that you schedule something and you're going to have the time to walk around and ask questions with the home inspector throughout the process. Now, after you schedule that home inspection, you're going to show up with the home inspector, be there a little bit early because a lot of them like to be there early as well. And you're probably going to see him take pictures. You're probably going to see him write down notes and stuff like that. So you definitely want to make sure that you ask questions on everything and anything. Now is the time to inform yourself of everything that's going on with the property. So you want to make sure that if you have a question on something, whether it be the wood, whether it be if you think he sees termite damage, whether it be anything at all, you wanna make sure that you ask those questions then. Now, once he's done with the home inspection, he's gonna send you the report. Sometimes they give them in like a PDF file. So sometimes they email it to you. So now once you have that inspection report in hand, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look through all of it. You're gonna to talk to your realtor about everything that's on there. And you guys are gonna figure out if you should go back to the seller or not on any of those items. Some things you might want the seller to fix prior to you moving into the property and some things you might want to do on your own after you completed the closing process. So once you get the report back from the inspector, you have an opportunity to either A, go back to the seller and say, I want A, B, and C fixed on the property. You can give them a laundry list of things. You can give them absolutely nothing. It doesn't really matter. It's totally up to you and it depends on the transaction. Every transaction is different. So don't think that there's a right or wrong way to do things. But I'll tell you, if you have a laundry your list of things and you go back to the seller and say you need to fix all these things or else I'm not buying the property in today's market where normally there's a lot of other buyers that are very well qualified and if your offer wasn't even the strongest offer and they just liked you and liked your realtor and they wanted to work with you odds are they're probably gonna back out of the deal and choose one of those other offers. so you do have to be very careful especially if you really want that prop so be very very careful of what you're asking them to fix and be very careful with what you're saying that you want to fix on your own. So now once you give that seller that report, you give them everything that you want them to fix prior to closing. If they accept, awesome. You can carry on with the transaction and they're going to take care of that for you before closing, hopefully. And now the next step is to tell the bank and the bank is now going to order the appraisal on the property. So now what the appraisal is, it's a third party company, somebody that comes in that doesn't have a stake in the transaction at all. And they're going to try to estimate the value of the property given the other 
sales that happen and the condition of the property that you're in. So the reason why the appraisal is so important is because the lender doesn't want to lend money on an amount that doesn't exist. So for instance, if you have a $250,000 property or you're purchasing a $250,000 property, but the value of it is only $150,000. And I know that's a really, really big difference, but I'm just using this as an example. So if the property's value is only $150,000, if for whatever reason you foreclose on the property, the bank owns it. They're not going to lend $250,000 on that $150,000 because otherwise they lost lost $100,000 just by allowing you to live there. So for the transaction to go smoothly, you need that appraisal to come out good. Now, as a buyer, if the appraisal comes in over what you're actually going to be purchasing the property for, then awesome. You just bought a property and you have instant equity inside that property. But on the flip side, if the property value is actually lower than the purchase price, meaning that the appraisal didn't think that the property was worth the purchase price of it, now you have a couple different options of what you can do. You can either number one, you can bring cash to the closing and make up the difference between two. So for instance, if the property that $250,000 purchase price was only appraised at $240,000, well, you can add $10,000 on the back end, meaning you pay $10,000 additional for that particular property. So you, you can do that if you want, if you're comfortable with overpaying for a property. Either B, you can renegotiate with the seller and sometimes what will happen is the seller will come down $10,000 um, or, you know, sometimes you can meet 50, 50. So if it's say a $5,000 difference for the buyer to come up, they bring $5,000 to the closing table and the purchase price comes down $5,000. So that can happen as well. You can negotiate with the seller. You can contest the appraisal. If you didn't think that property value was accurate and you think that the property value was a little bit higher, then that is something that you can do. You can go back to that appraisal company or that appraiser and you can try to reason with them to see if they're willing to bring up their appraisal a little bit or if you guys can't come to an agreement and the appraisal isn't working then you can always walk away from the property this is kind of your time and your decision this is why we have that mortgage contingency in the purchase and sale so as this whole appraisal process is going on the bank is actually going to have their underwriter in the background kind of take a look at your expenses and at your income and they're going to be double checking to make sure that you are qualified for this loan. Now, the reason why this underwriting process is really, really important is because he's the one that's ultimately giving you the loan or he's the one that's saying, okay, you're okay to pay this money back and we're going to take our chances on you. So you do have to make sure that you don't have any big purchases and you don't have any credit inquiries at this time because anything like that can delay the closing or even ultimately not allow you to get that mortgage. Now it's not uncommon at this time where they ask for additional paperwork, they ask additional questions just to make sure that they have a track record of all the cash and everything that's going in and out of your bank accounts. And that's why the underwriting process is so important. So there you have it. There are steps five and six of the home purchase process. In the next video, I'm going to go through steps seven and eight, which is going to be bringing us to the closing table and the final day of closing. So I hope you you guys are excited please smash the like and subscribe button for me if you really like this video and you want me to bring more content for you don't forget to share with your friends and family as always thank you have a good day